So you hear me okay, right? Yeah, we're good. Okay, so we'll call the meeting to order at uh, 6.05 uh, p.m. And I'll just ask that uh, Director Len please uh, lead us in the pledge. I So we've got uh, Len and Stan and Alec uh, via phone. Um, Mike is uh, not joining us tonight. So otherwise, we're good. And uh, any uh, any additional uh, or deleted items we want to consider for the agenda? Move we approve the agenda. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. <coughs> All right, let's take a look at the, uh, Alec, did you, did you see the packet I take it? Yes, I've got it from here. Okay, very good. So we're going to take a look at the uh, special minute uh, meetings from uh, April 18th, and uh, uh, let's ultimately, uh, let's review those, and then we'll... we'll Open class number for Thomas at 26659 Pleasant Park Road, can be a sick case. So anyway, we just want to take a look at those uh, minutes, and then we'll... Uh, Okay, Alec, uh, uh, since you're the leader of the financial side, do you want to take us through the financial report for April? Sure. Uh, I have before you the, uh, <coughs> the monthly expenditures and the uh, revenues uh, for the month. Uh, I'd like to move the approval of uh, expenditures in the amount of $175,000. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We also have the uh, detailed uh, financial statement attached. I reviewed this with uh, Marie, and uh, I think things are pretty well in order. Okay. No other items to uh, refer to then in that regard, Alec? I do not have any. Okay. All right. Very good. So with that, Bill, we'll go to uh, to your report. Okay. Okay. Uh, to start with, uh, for uh, <coughs> incidents uh, in April, we had 74 calls. Uh, notably, we had two structural fires. Um, we have, you know, all of last year, we didn't have a single structure fire until November. Uh, this year, we have had uh, nine structure fires already, and uh, you know, it's an unfortunate trend. Uh, one of the structure fires was in an unoccupied home, uh, and uh, it was not reported until uh, the fire had burned through the roof and was visible, you know, from uh, quite a distance. In fact, it was visible from Conifer Mountain by the time it was reported, so there was uh, no chance of saving that structure. Is there a cause on that? Uh, it appears to have been an electrical fire. Um, they're doing a more detailed investigation in it, but they have been doing renovations in preparation for putting it on the market to sell. And somewhere in that process, um, it, you know, it appears that uh, they had an electrical fire in the garage in the middle of the night, and, um, and unfortunately, because it was in a neighborhood where it could not be seen from, you know, neighboring homes, uh, it was it was well advanced before it was noticed. This is the one on. That was on Sunset Sun Trail. Mm -hmm. uh, the other structure fire was out in Pine Junction. It was at a business that sells uh, supplies for hydroponic uh, farming. And uh, that also appears to have been an electrical fire. Uh, that one, unfortunately, there was no damage to the structure, but there was a fairly extensive damage to uh, the um, fertilizers and the other products that they had been planning on selling, which were primarily smoke damaged, but uh, obviously you can't really sell smoke damaged uh, goods. Um, so that was a, that ended up being a fairly significant loss uh, for that business also. 
Um, we did have uh, um, turnout times uh, or response times appear to be holding relatively steady, about nine minutes and 48 seconds on average to get to uh, all our incidents. Um, that, uh, that's pretty similar to everything you know each month that we've had lately. Um, we did have uh, mutual aid come in uh, from Platte Canyon four times and Evergreen Fire one time and uh, in turn we provided uh, automatic aid to Platte Canyon Fire on one occasion. Uh, it's been a trend lately that uh, we've been getting more assistance than we've been providing. Uh, and in fact, with our structure fires, uh, because we no longer have a fire marshal, uh, we, um, in the past, were able to, um, you know, when, when our fire marshal wasn't available, get assistance on a uh, mutual aid basis. But now because, you know, we're basically calling every time to get uh, someone in to do investigations, that's now something that we're contracting for and, and um, you know, paying for Inner Canyon's fire marshal to come out and, and, and do those investigations, which we're required to do by, uh, by um, statute. Um, let's see, uh, in training, uh, it was a pretty remarkable month for training. We had, uh, in, in addition to the Recruit Academy, we had a uh, chainsaw class for wildland fires as well as a uh, bumps class. And in total, uh, the firefighters logged over 2,500 hours of training, which works out to 36 hours per member of the department. Training last month. That's incredible. Yeah, That's so we had uh, we had people. We had one volunteer who was here uh, 60 hours in four days, um, you know, wow. either training or uh, you know, being available and going out on calls. So That's um, incredible. Yeah, yeah, very very dedicated group of folks that we've got right now, and uh, it's been staying very busy. Uh, EMS, you know, since uh, December <coughs> when we started, uh, um, you know, when when after we moved to Swedish Medical Center, they're doing a, a much more uh, detailed look at, uh, at all of our uh, medical care that we provide and um, you know, being, they're much more active in our, our training. One of the things that they've been doing, as I mentioned, was is that uh, they actually go through every single call that we have and uh, grade it you know, on, a, on a scale um, you know, from zero to four, uh, you know, in terms of how good the care that they've been providing. Um, we've been seeing that score steadily increase, and um, it's up to 3.6 on average for the month now, which is above, you know, for the first time it's above our target of 3.5 as a minimum uh, standard. A lot of that has been because they, because of that feedback that we're getting uh, from Swedish and the additional training that, uh, you know, it's, it's really, um, a lot more helpful for all of our paramedics and the EMTs, you know, to uh, you know hear from their doctor what uh, what they want to see in the reports and, and what care uh, you know they should be providing. So that's uh, that's been a big benefit, and you know, uh, this, the move to Swedish Medical Center has been just outstanding for us. And who's the doctor, the physician liaison on the group? Uh, Dylan Leighton. Who's Leighton? Uh, Leighton. Leighton. Uh, he's a, uh, an emergency room doctor down at uh, down at Swedish Medical. Works between there and uh, and the Southwest uh, facility, uh, and he handles all of the uh, agencies, uh, Englewood Fire, and uh, a couple of the other agencies that uh, that use Health One. Or um, you know, he he does all of their uh, medical direction. So Great, thank you. He's he's been he's been very very helpful to us. Uh, let's see, other things, we did sell the reserve uh, ambulance for $30,000 uh, to a department in Kentucky. Well, oddly enough, they actually bought a, um, a surplus ambulance from us eight years ago. So, and that's been their first line ambulance ever since. So now they have two former Elk Creek ambulances on their, on their yeah, in Kentucky, of all places. The, um, we uh, did get uh, the used uh, U.S. Forest Service truck is uh, now in service and it's been completed. Um, that, and that truck is going to be uh, adding quite a bit to our capability uh, in, in terms of having uh, a lot more hose, a lot more water, and more tools than the small uh, brush trucks that uh, we use at the other uh, two stations. 
Um, the other thing that we are doing with that is that we've started to put together what are called sprinkler kits. So if we have a situation where there's a wildfire, we can actually set up sprinklers outside the structure, turn on a pump, and just then we can leave if the fire is too intense to stay and the, and the structures are protected. Um, unfortunately, you know, we're off to a very slow start with that. Uh, basically, it takes about $400 of equipment to put together each one of these kits that then can protect, you know, basically three or four homes. So, you know, we're going to put together a handful of them, but uh, we're not going to be able to put together enough to protect an entire neighborhood at this point. Um, that is a big, uh, a big push in the, in the wildland uh, fire fighting uh, business. Is to, uh, you know, we've seen, um, you know, a lot of these fires like Waldo Canyon and High Park. When the fire makes a run towards homes, you know, it's really what we can do ahead of time because, you know, when the flames are 100 feet in the air, we can't leave the firefighters there in front of it. So, you know, trying to put together something that will let us protect homes even in those high danger uh, situations uh, is, a, is a big benefit. Uh, but, you know, as of right now, we've got, you know, enough of those kits built up just to have, you know, two or three, three or four homes at right now. So that'll be something we'll try to do in the future if, uh, if funds allow. The uh, UTV also was, uh, has been put in service, and that again was the one that was partially funded uh, by the Rotary um, uh, Club and uh, <coughs> partially funded by the uh, uh, Firefighters Association. So uh, between them, they, they uh, put together $12,000 out of a total $19,000 that, that it took to get that uh, project put together. We had set a target of having that in service before Staunton opened, so that we've got the ability to get in on the trails there, uh, in addition to having a small fire pump on the back, it's got uh, a carrier for a litter so that we can you know, transport people in uh, from you know, hiking accidents or biking accidents. Um, you also indicated um, sometime in the past that you were going to approach the state for potential funding for special training for our volunteers? We did, uh, we did uh, take a look at that and, and um, I think that, uh, you know, we, there's not much that they can do directly for us on that uh, in terms of being able to, you know, fund our operation uh, directly. If you recall, a couple of years ago, the state passed a law that basically said that fire districts have to protect state property at no reimbursement. Uh, and so, you know, even though the state park is o has opened and has added to our potential risk, uh, you know, there, we don't get anything from the state. Uh, <coughs> we've talked to, uh, you, know, the, um, you know, the local ranger, and, and what we've worked out with that is that, uh, you know, we can basically charge if we take their personnel into wildland fire classes or first aid classes, <coughs> They can reimburse us for, you know, that cost, but uh, there's there's not really much that we can do directly with them. And when does it officially open? It opens on the 18th, the 18th, so wow. a week from Saturday. Yeah, I think the trails are going to be a little muddy though. Yeah, it's day hiking only. Uh, right now, it's going to be day use only. Uh, they anticipate adding camping at some date in the future, uh, but that's going to be dependent on. You know, getting funding. They they had enough funding to approve, to put the day use uh, together, and um, some of that some of the funding is based on how many people end up using the park. So if it gets a lot of use, then they'll probably uh, develop the park. You know, on a, on a more rapid scale. But as of right now, they're not anticipating that camping will occur in the next couple of seasons. Uh, we did have a couple of uh, apparatus out of service uh, during the month. Um, our frontline fire engine was out for <coughs> almost the entire month uh, with uh, a handful of problems. Um, basically, it had electrical problems and uh, generator problems, so it's back in service now without the generator. Uh, and then in addition, uh, four, Tender 462, which is our oldest tender, uh, was having uh, front end problems that made it uh, unsafe to drive. Uh, however, the mechanic was able to add a steering stabilizer to that and we got it back on the road again, uh, at least for now. 
Um, one of the big things that we has come up that uh, we have not budgeted for is uh, you know, we have uh, right now uh, the only way that we have of washing uh, all of the firefighters turnout gear is to take it up to Bergen Park uh, to Evergreen Fire and they uh, let us use their washer. Unfortunately what that means is that every time that we go to wash a set of gear, you know, it's a 45 minute drive there and a 45 minute drive back and a volunteer basically has to sit up there for you know two hours waiting for the gear to wash. Uh, so we, um, the majority of our, basically all of our gear should be washed at an absolute minimum twice a year, uh, but um, most of it is getting washed about every other year right now. Uh, and that's causing both damage to the gear and increased risk to the firefighters uh, from basically carrying around whatever it is that was in the you know, burning structure that they were in. What's the cost of uh, the equipment to wash? What it would, we got uh, quotes on, uh, on a washer and uh, it's about $6,000 installed uh, to, to pick up a washer that's capable of handling the turnout gear. Uh, however, right now that uh, would be the equivalent of you know, two pairs of pants and one jacket. Uh, that's basically because we're looking at two thousand dollars, you know, each half for those ensembles. So, uh, over the life of that washer, it'll more than you know make up You're for the cost. You're going to save a lot of the gear. Yeah, I mean the gear will last longer and, and be a lot safer for the firefighters. So, I would like to go ahead and uh, and you know, basically, it's an unbudgeted uh, item, uh, but uh, so we need to approve it. We, yeah, that would be something that we'd need, uh, need approval on the board on. Can you pick up the used one? You know, we looked into that, and the big problem is that these these washers are so well built that they're never replaced. <laughs> uh, you know, basically, it was good. Yeah, yeah. I had the same the same brand of washer at, pre at two previous departments I've worked at, and you know, there were 15 years, and, and there was still never any maintenance required. So they're. That's why they're expensive. It's not like your Maytag that you throw in a, you know. Do you want to buy an out of your report? Mm -hmm. I move that we purchase a gear washer. Oh, yeah, a second. Absolutely. Alec, are you hearing this okay? He falls. He muted. Alex? <laughs> Alex? He might be shoveling his driveway. <laughs> <laughs> There you are. Are you, are you here? Did you particularly hear that uh, last item regarding the... Uh, so about the purchase of the washer? Yeah, for the, for the turnout gear? Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know if you need a boy over here with that. I want to be around. Uh, she could demonstrate to us that uh, we can accommodate it somewhere in the budget. It's okay. Well, we already have a motion on the floor. We have a motion seconded. Made and seconded, so given that, why don't we just carry ahead? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> okay. As far as uh, you know, funding for that, uh, what I would anticipate is that we would use some of the funds from the uh, ambulance that we sold that was also yep. not included Great. in the budget. Great. Great. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a place to put it? Uh, we do. We'll uh, look at that. Um, yeah. we, we looked at two different locations and we can, we can install it either one. Okay. Okay. Um, insurance, fire insurance uh, continues to be a, a big issue, uh, and we've been looking into that further. Unfortunately, uh, in the last couple of weeks, we've found that uh, we've been notified that uh, uh, at least three carriers will no longer uh, insure any properties in uh, in the area. Uh, USAA, California Casualty, and Alliance have all. Uh, Basically, they said they will write no new policies in the area, and uh, we're continuing to hear more and more from many of the other carriers about, uh, you know, increased requirements or increased costs on uh, fire insurance. Um, we've had several, uh, been notified of several people that have been dropped lately because uh, the mitigation requirements that the insurance companies are now calling for has been uh, extended. Uh, many times to uh, up to removing all vegetation within 100 feet of a structure in order to get insurance. So I think that's going to continue to be a, a problem as we <coughs> um, Grants, uh, we did, um, we did uh, find out that we did not get the grant for the fire engine. Uh, unfortunately, we got, uh, got cut on that one. Uh, 
wasn't too surprised. Uh, you know, they, they made some changes after sequestration to reduce the number of grants that they're handing out. Uh, and then on the top of that, we are still um, we are still in line to possibly get a grant for seventy-two thousand dollars for uh, training. <coughs> Uh, but one of the things that came up with that is that we had to close out the CWPP grant, which you'll recall from, uh, you know, we've been working for the last year to try to get that resolved. Uh, I finally got a, a final determination on that, and we are going to have to return $18,000 in funds that were taken in by the district for a project that they did not do on a 2007 grant, uh, basically. Uh, the grant administrator at the time basically just dropped the, the ball and uh, did not complete the project, and uh, so we have to return those funds uh, to FEMA. Uh, that's the second grant uh, that we had the, uh, with the same uh, issue, the previous one had been the SCBA grant uh, that, uh, back in 2008 that uh, uh, the you know, paperwork was not completed correctly. and. and Basically, they never finished uh, filing all the paperwork on it, and part of that was that uh, they had taken had taken the grant money, had not spent all of it, and you know we finally got around to returning that uh, this year. Uh, we do have one grant still outstanding, also with uh, the state for the um, uh, purchase of the laptops. Uh, that'd be a relatively small grant, but. Uh, it um, would at least be uh, something. The uh, uh, deputy chief uh, vacancy, we have uh, made a provisional offer um, to one of the candidates, and we're negotiating to uh, get that person on, um, hopefully in about uh, six weeks or so. That's probably the soonest we can expect to get that person started. Uh, Let's see, uh, mutual aid, one of the major things that, that's going on with that is that uh, all of the departments along the 285 corridor have uh, gotten together and agreed to basically organize um, you know, as a strike team for response to other parts of Colorado, um, which is something that uh, we've been trying to get uh, as a program going throughout uh, the state. Uh, that uh, was another one of the projects that uh, came out of the Lower North Fork fires, uh, trying to come up with a way to be, um, have fire departments be able to respond, react and respond more quickly to the request for mutual aid outside of their immediate neighbors. Uh, that was a uh, distinct uh, problem that we ran into with, you know, taking four or five hours for the near, you know, fire engines to get up here. Uh, from, you know, even, you know, Douglas County, which is not really four or five hours away. The delay wasn't, you know, traveling up here. The delay was getting organized and, um, you know, finding out who was available. So uh, we're hoping that this agreement that we're putting together and working with the state and the county on will serve as a model to other, uh, other areas of the state in terms of, you know, being able to quickly uh, put those resources together and get them out to assist other departments. And that is all I've got. If you have any questions? Thank you, Chief. Yeah, thank you very much. All right. Um, so, uh, regarding the level of service committee, I was actually going to lean on Gary to uh, touch on that, but he's not here this evening. So, uh, with that, I'm going to lean on uh, Chief as well as Alec. Alec, if you'll uh, chime in on the level of service update, that'd be great too. Okay, uh, one of the things, you know, we've been working through, uh, kind of looking at a number of different um, measures uh, of what we're doing, and uh, we're still kind of, kind of putting all of that part of it together, uh, and as well, um, looking at uh, kind of the future financial uh, Im implications of uh, current funding versus uh, you know possible increases in funding and what services could be provided uh, for that. Um, that uh, is something actually uh, Gary has been working pretty extensively on and, and uh, has basically you know uh, kind of 
he's got some some good stuff put together, but we probably want to get a time when Gary can come in and talk to the whole board about uh, kind of those financial projections. Uh, one of the other uh, main things that we're looking at right now and, and we're getting ready to do is to send a survey out or basically have a survey linked onto our website and then put a, put the, um, an announcement in our newsletter so that people can go uh, you know, to the website and, and, uh, and complete that survey. And that would basically look at you know, what the residents of our community want um, and what, whether or not uh, you know, they're, um, they're willing or, uh, to pay for increased services or if they you know, uh, would rather see the services decline uh, with the current level of service. As we stand right now, uh, if we do not uh, increase uh, funding for the department through a, a mill levy, uh, we're almost certainly looking at uh, you know, um, you know, having to take some of the apparatus you know, off of the uh, uh, fleet you know, in the next couple of years. Uh, and that would uh, essentially, we would end up uh, closing at least one of the stations from doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, the, um, Right now, we're not putting any money away for fleet replacement uh, because, of, because of the cuts that we've taken in the last uh, couple of years. Uh, right, we're also looking at um, you know the kind of the forecast of what we're going to see with uh, the next assessment cycle. Uh, it was an unfortunate timing in that you know the last assessment uh, was was done based on June pricing in the market of last year. Uh, and that was before, you know, we, we've actually seen a really you know, big turnaround in the housing market right. since then. Uh, unfortunately, for 2014 and 2015, they're going to be based on June of last year. Uh, so what we're hoping for right now is that it stays flat, uh, because the other possibility would be, uh, you know, a further decline, uh, which... Uh, be <coughs> relatively difficult for the <coughs> and maintain the, the level of operations that we've got. Um, do you have some estimate of timelines insofar as when the survey might go out and when we might receive definitive recommendations from the level of service committee? The, uh, the proposal is to have the, the survey up uh, before the newsletter goes out um, later this month, uh, and so we'd anticipate that we'd have re you know responses from that survey uh, by June, good. and I would hope that we would have a, a pretty good picture of, of whether or not uh, there would be a recommendation to, to for a mill levy by June. Thank you. Is the survey just electronic? Yes, it's going to be an electronic uh, version. We looked at uh, mailing it out, but uh, that would be relatively expensive to do. Oh, yeah. Can we ask Gary perhaps to make a presentation at the next meeting? I think, I think we could do that, yeah. Thank you. Alex, did you want to add anything? <clears throat> well, I think the chief covered the survey, and, and uh, we, uh, I think I'm going to have a meeting next week. Uh, Wednesday. Look at some of the stuff that's been done. Uh, I think the board is going to need this input <coughs> to the next meeting because uh, mm -hmm. uh, we have to make some decisions about moving forward if we're going to move forward on the, uh, on the levy increase. <coughs> What's our drop rate <coughs> <day? coughs> for putting something? I, I think it, I think, <coughs> I think it's a project. Uh, Ninety days prior to November, I think, correct? Yeah. yeah. Right. It would be the August meeting that uh, yeah. the board would have to, have to, have to, to <laughs> actually pass a resolution to enter into that election in November. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So, uh, any old business to re review? Alec, you good? I have not. Okay. All right. How about uh, new business to consider? I have not. I have not. All right. 
any citizen issues. <laughs> With that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Second? Second. All right. <laughs> all right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Six thirty-five. Thanks, Alec. Thanks. Thank you. All right. We'll see you next week. Bye, Alex.